What's happening guys? We're back for another video here today. We're talking about editing to the beat in DaVinci Resolve. It's gonna look a little something like this. So what'd you think? That was pretty cool, right? And it took me no time to create that. So like a lot of things here in DaVinci Resolve, there's more than one way to edit to the beat. But the way that we're gonna look at today is pretty simple. And if you're a visual person, it's gonna help you visualize where those beats are and where your cuts need to go. And if you haven't used the transients feature before in the Fairlight tab, that's what we're gonna be using to help us edit to the beat. Now there is an awesome feature in Premiere Pro that's called something like Automate to Sequence, I think, where it lets you edit to the beat real quickly. Actually, I think it does most of the work for you. Unfortunately, they don't have that in Resolve yet, that I know of. Hopefully it's coming soon. But the method that we're gonna look at today is pretty quick too, and it really doesn't take that long. Today's video is sponsored by Artlist, and we're gonna talk about them a little bit more in a few minutes here. We're gonna jump on their website and download some music that we're gonna edit to the beat with. But as I was putting this video together and editing it, I decided I wanted to just show you guys the technique first. And if you had questions, then keep watching and we're gonna go through everything in detail. But if you didn't want to stick around for all that, I want to show you the technique. So let's get into the technique. You can see what it is. And if you have questions, you want to know more specifically how to use this technique, stay tuned because I'm going to go into detail for everything. Once you understand the process, it's really pretty quick and easy. Check this out. I'm going to grab another piece of music here. I don't even know what it is. It's just random. I'm going to actually just normalize it real quick because I don't want it to be too loud and blow out your ears or my ears. So let's see. What do we got here? Okay, so got some music here. Now I'm gonna go through this process real quick just to show you guys how quick and easy it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the track. I'm gonna select the track EQ. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit here in the inspector. Turn on band four, I'm gonna drag that down. Band one, we're gonna turn that on, move that. Now I'm gonna to listen to it, isolate just that track. See if I can isolate the beat a little bit more. All right, so I think that's pretty good. I can really hear the kick drum in there. I'm gonna right click on my clip, new compound clip. I don't care what we name it. So I'm just gonna hit okay. I'm gonna zoom in here and now we can really see that we see a little bit more of where those beats are. So I can either just edit to the beats right here. I can try my best or I'm gonna jump into Fairlight. I'm gonna zoom in. And since we already had the transient detection turned on, it's just gonna appear on our tracks here. And you can really see the difference here. Look at this, boom, right there, there. We could see where those beats are happening versus before that you had a lot more transients going on. So you can just come over here, come back to the beginning. I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna start on the second one. And since our timeline settings were already set to just transients, we're good to go there. Select your clip and then use your up and down arrow keys to jump to the transients that you wanna add the marker to. Press M to add your marker and that's it, you're good to go. And there you go, it's pretty quick and easy. Then I'm gonna jump back into the edit tab here. I've got my markers, I can drop in my clips, use the cut and ripple delete just like we did before and boom, you're gonna have your video clips edited to the beat of your music. So you want to make sure you've got all your assets good to go. You've got your video clips. You got the music you want to edit to. If you're like me, I'm jumping on Artlist here because I want to find some music. If you haven't checked out Artlist before, they are awesome. They have tons of great music, new stuff getting added all the time. They've got great sound effects. They are the sponsor of today's video. And if you haven't tried out Artlist, I would definitely recommend giving it a try. If you do sign up for an account, you can use the link in the description below and you're going to get two months for free when you sign up for a whole year. All right, so we're on our list and I'm gonna grab a song and I actually know what song I wanna get. So I'm just gonna go ahead and search for it and it's called Raw Power. So I'm gonna come up to the top here and just search for my song, Raw Power. And boom, here it is, the first one. Now I'm gonna put on my headphones here so I can hear what I'm listening to. But here's what this song sounds like, check it out. <laughs> Now that's some good music right there. And that's what we're gonna use to edit our clips to the beat. So I'm gonna download this guy, but I'm gonna click on this guy right here to download again. You can use MP3 or WAVE, whatever you want. I usually use MP3s. I'm gonna click that, it's gonna download it. 
And while we're here on Artlist, some other cool things you can do. You can sort by similar kinds of songs. You can make it a favorite. Or you can even make collections. You can share a song. There's so much you can do with all this stuff on here. Artlist is, I mean, it's, it's an awesome platform. That's why I'm telling you guys about it. Because I want to share the things that I use that work good for me. Because it's going to work good for you too. If it's something that you need and that you're interested in. Real quick, if you're interested in the price, you can pay $9.99 a month. And that's going to give you access to all of their assets. And they're good on any social media platform. If you need a little bit more uh, distribution, you're putting it on TV, maybe using it for Netflix. You making a Netflix movie? That'd be cool. Maybe you're doing some other commercial work, podcast, something like that. You're going to want to go with the unlimited plan, which is about $16.60 a month, which works out to be about 200 bucks a year. I think it's $199 when you do the math. And if you sign up for a year at a time, you're going to save a few bucks. So I would recommend that you do that. But overall, I can't recommend Artless enough. There's a ton of great stuff there. Thank you, Artless, for sponsoring today's video. Now we're going to take that song, jump into Resolve, and we're going to edit to the beat. So we're in Resolve here. I've got my audio in my timeline. So whatever your audio is, drop it in your timeline. I do have my clips in here. They're ready to go in the order that I want, but we're not going to use those yet. First, we need to find where the beats are and mark them with a marker. And that's going to make our job of editing our clips to the beat a whole lot easier. So right now I'm in the edit tab right here, but we want to jump over into Fairlight so we can use the transient detection and figure out exactly where those beats are. So jump over into Fairlight, musical notes at the bottom here. So in Fairlight here, we want to turn on the transient detection, which is going to kind of tell us where all those beats are in the music. To get to the transient detection, it's this little wavy icon right here. So you want to go ahead and click on that and turn it on. Now you notice I don't see them popping up on my uh, on my clip here. Why? Well, we need to turn it on per track as well. So this may be on by default. It may not. But if it's not, right over here, we have transient detection. So once you turn that on, you're going to see it's going to put those little markers in there, or the little lines, I should say. These aren't markers. The little lines that show you visually where the beats are. Now it's going to do all the beats for you. You know, maybe it's the the drums, the the snare drum, maybe it's the bass guitar. It's putting all those in there together. So how do we know which one's which? Well, a few different ways. You could watch it and listen to it. So you can hear the kick there. Uh, you know, it's mainly on these these bigger ones here. But let's see if I scroll over where, you know, the music is a little more consistent. Let's hear what that sounds like. So the transients, I think, do a good job of telling us exactly where the beats are that we might want to edit to. But let's try and get a little more precise here with our transients. Let's say maybe I want to edit right to that kick drum or to the bass guitar, and I don't want to worry about the other stuff. Well, here's what we can do. Check this out. We can take our clip. We're going to copy it down to a new track. I'm just going to hold Option or Alt. Click on my clip and drag it down to a new track. Now what I want to do is select my clip, and I actually want to open up the inspector. So go ahead and open the inspector and we can use the EQ on our clip to help isolate the sounds that we might want to edit to. In this case, you know, the kick drum or the bass guitar. So I'm going to turn on my equalizer and we're going to take band four and we're just going to roll this down because we don't want to know about anything that's, you know, in the upper range there. We're mainly looking for that low end bass or kick drum. So I'm going to play through it. And what we're going to do is bring this number point number four down. And actually I can turn off point number three because we don't need that. I'm going to bring point number four down until I don't hear any of those highs. And then on band one here, I might bring this up a little bit because I don't need any of the real low end stuff but I still do need a little bit of the low end to kind of figure out where the beats are here. So here's what we're going to do. Play through it and see how it sounds. And then we're going to make adjustments to our point one and point four. I'm going to mute my first track there and let's go back to the beginning. Okay, can you hear that? We're mostly getting the low end now, and you can hear the thud, right? The thud of uh, sounds like the bass guitar there. Let me, let me listen in again. So with those adjustments there on the EQ, I think I can hear that the, the thumping of the bass and the kick drum pretty good. So the next thing you want to do is actually go back into the edit tab right here, because right now... Nothing looks any different with our clip, right? So we want to come back in the edit tab. And I'm going to select the clip we were working with. I'm going to right click and say new compound clip. And actually, before I do that, let me zoom in a little bit more here on our clip. So you're going to see the difference of what happens here. So take a look at our waveforms here. This is the original. Now take a look at what happens when I have that EQ applied and I make it a compound clip. I'm going to select my clip, right click, 
new compound clip. You call it whatever you want, doesn't matter. I'm just gonna leave it as it is right now. So now look, we can see where our beats are a lot more. And even if we look, compare the two, right? We look at this, you know, say this section right here, we can see where those kick drums might be or the bass guitar might be. So let's just isolate this one layer, listen to it again. All right, so I think I think what we have there is pretty much what we want is that kick drum. So let's jump back into Fairlight. And now I wanna run the transient detection on this layer. So over here on the left, I wanna turn on the transient detection. And now what do we notice when we look at the two? There are less transients in here, right? And they look like they're a little more just on that beat. And especially when I scroll over to an area like this, you notice, look, we've got the transient right on the beats, whereas the clip before that, it showed more transients in there, right? So it's kind of a little bit closer to the beat here. Now we can tweak the EQ and really isolate it a little bit more if we want to. You can do that too. That's no problem. But I think for our purposes here, this is going to be good enough. And also keep in mind, it's going to depend on the song that you have because different songs obviously have, you know, different kind of music going in them. So you're going to have to adjust your EQ a little different based on the particular song that you're trying to edit to the beat with. So now let's say I just want to put markers where those transients are. How do I do that? Well, staying in the Fairlight tab here, you want to come up to the top, click on this guy, and we want to adjust some of our navigation options. I think by default, maybe these guys are turned on. You want to make sure that these three are turned off and that you've only got the transient detect turned on. So this is going to help us jump right to those transients by pressing our arrow keys. So now what I want to do is I'm going to select my clip here and I'm just going to use my up and down arrow keys to jump from transient to transient. And at each spot, because I know it's where the beat is or where that kick drum is, I'm gonna put a marker. And it can be really easy. You just use the letter M on your keyboard, that's gonna drop a marker, and you use the up and down arrows to cruise through the transients. And you may need to hit the arrow once or twice because sometimes the transients are really close together. So if it looks like it's, you know, maybe gotta move a little bit, just hit your arrow key again and it'll bump it forward to the next one. Now, when I'm looking at these, I know that most of these smaller ones, that might be where the snare drum hits, right? I don't want that. So I wanna go where the last louder noise is, which is going to be the bigger waveform here. So I'm just going to always jump ahead and put a marker at the bigger waveform there. Yo guys, jumping in here real quick. The reason why it's hitting what looks like to be little transients is because it's actually hitting the transients on the track above it. So you got to grab that track and move it out of the way. I'll show you how to do that a little later in this video, but that's how you can get it. So it only goes to the transients on the clip that you're working on. All right, back to the video. Now you can add in as many of the markers here as you want. Depends on how many clips you have. And if you're not exactly sure where something might be happening, go ahead and listen to it a little bit. It's not a big deal to listen in and kind of use listening in combination with these transients to figure out where exactly you want to put those markers. But try and get the markers as close to where you want them as you can, because it's going to make it a lot easier when we go to edit our video to it, which is actually really fast. I'm adding a few more markers and then we're going to add in our video. All right, so zooming out, how many got in there? Eh, that might be good enough. So once you have your markers set, we want to jump back into the edit tab. So I'll go ahead and click back into the edit tab and adjust my tracks here so I can see a little bit better. So now is when we want to bring in our video clip. So I already have mine set in the order that I want to use them. So I'm just going to select all my clips. I didn't cut these or anything. I just dragged them and dropped them in the timeline in the order that I wanted to use them. So I'm going to slide these all the way back to the beginning here. I'm going to zoom in. And now what we want to do is make cuts everywhere that we have a marker. But not only do we want to cut the clip, we want to cut and ripple delete. So we want to make a cut and then delete everything after our cut for that particular clip. And don't worry if it's not the exact section of the clip that you wanna see, I'm gonna show you how to fix that in a minute too. And that's really quick and easy. So I'm gonna to come to the first marker here that I wanna make a cut at and ripple delete everything after it for this particular clip. The one thing that you wanna make sure you have set first before we make our cuts and edit to the beat here is in your audio tracks, you wanna make sure you turn off your audio track selector. This way, when we apply cuts to our clips and we ripple delete, it's not gonna mess up our audio tracks, it's only gonna affect our video. Video tracks. So any tracks you don't want affected by this ripple delete, make sure you go ahead and turn off your auto track selector right here. So now I'm going to go ahead and move ahead to my first marker where I want to start to make a cut and then ripple delete everything after it. Now don't worry if the clip isn't the exact section that you want. We're going to fix that later and it's super easy. For now we just want to make our cuts and delete the parts of the clip that we don't need. So I've reassigned my cut and ripple delete keys to the W and the Q keys on my keyboard. But to check what yours is, if you come on up to trim, and then you come down to ripple 
you're gonna see start to play head and end to play head. So whatever those keyboard shortcuts are, that's what you wanna use. As you can see here, I've reassigned mine to Q and W. And I think that works out really good because then I have the S key as just the regular cut and not rebel delete. So remember your keyboard shortcut here and that's what we're gonna be using. So the next important thing you wanna know is how do we jump from marker to marker quickly? So if you hold the shift and your arrow keys, that's gonna allow you to jump from marker to marker, forwards or backwards, depending on whether you use the up or down key. So if I hold shift, press down, see how it jumps from marker to marker? So that is gonna be what makes it so quick to jump from marker to marker to edit to our beat. So going back to the first one here. So I'm just gonna to come to the first one here and now I'm gonna use my ripple delete key, boom. I'm gonna go to the next marker, boom. Go to the next marker, ripple delete. And it looks like I left a little space here. We're gonna zoom in and delete that guy. I'll zoom out a little so you can see here. So I'm just gonna hold shift, down arrow, ripple delete. Shift down arrow, ripple delete. And I'm just gonna go through and do this all the way through until I use up all my clips, super quick, super easy. All right, so there we go, got through all my clips, I made my cuts, everything should be edited to the beat right now. So now let's take a look at what does this thing look like so far. But here's the next thing that you wanna do. Instead of using the audio track that has our markers on it where we adjusted the EQ and it's not you know, the normal music, we wanna go ahead and mute that track and unmute our original audio. So now we can go back and watch it and see what it looks like. So let's uh, take a look here and see how it looks. So it looks like maybe I might wanna adjust some of them there. That's okay, no problem. You're probably gonna need to make a little adjustments here and there. So I'll leave that up to you. You decide on your own clips whether you need to move things a little bit or not. So let's talk about how do we adjust the clips in case maybe we didn't get the exact portion of it that we wanted. Like in the beginning here, I'm actually gonna just mute this, so let's zoom in. In the beginning here, it's dark in the beginning because it just the clip just didn't start yet, right? So in order to adjust this, I'm gonna make my video tracks a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna come and use this tool right here, the edit trim mode. So when I have this selected and I come and hover over a clip, you'll see we get this little icon. Now I can just click on the clip, hold and drag and adjust what I'm looking at. And you can kind of see on the screen here, it's got like a little white box that kind of shows me how big the clip actually is. And I can just keep adjusting it until it's wherever I want it to be. So let's say I want it to be right there. Maybe eh, bring it over a little more. Let's try it like that. I'm gonna fade the clip in a little bit. And here's what it looks like. Not too shabby. Let's say maybe I wanna make this clip longer. I want it to be, you know, two widths or two beats, right? So it's a little bit longer. We can see what's happening in the beginning here. Another easy thing we can do, Option or Alt Y, it's gonna select all my clips in front of my playhead. And then I'm just gonna click on them and drag them over until I get to this next marker right here. And then I can just grab this clip and extend it out. So let's turn on our music and see how this looks. All right, not too bad, right? And now I did notice that this joint right here, maybe I wanna move that one over to like here about, and I, th I think that would be good. Yeah, that definitely works better. So that is it for this one, guys. A big thank you to Artlist for sponsoring today's video. Dude, editing to the beat is awesome. It makes your videos look better instead of just random cuts when you have the music going. You gotta edit to the beat. It just makes your videos look cooler. Come on, let's be honest. So if you guys are interested in Artlist, check out the link in the description below. You'll get two months for free if you sign up for a year. And with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Peace.